We're joined now by Narina Fissler, head of Beta Solutions at Nedbank Capital, to discuss how investors should decide on which ETFs and ETNs to invest in. And this obviously is your space, Narina, so I'm going to hand <laughs> over swiftly to you. And what should we be doing here? <laughs> Thanks, Bronwyn. Yes, I think what's, what's interesting is that we've suddenly seen a flurry of new ETFs and ETNs coming to the market in South Africa. As a matter of fact, there's two more being list listed on Monday. The launch event is tonight, Grinrod Bank bringing two of these so-called smart ETFs to the market. And I think that re raises the question is that not only do we have new ETNs and people say what's the difference between an ETF and an ETN but then also what are these smart ETFs and where do they fit into the spectrum. Um, after Monday's listing we'll be looking at 72 of these products listed on the JSE and we are very close to 90 billion rand um, in terms of total assets trading 5 billion rand a month. So certainly nothing um, too small or to sneeze at so where do you actually start? <laughs> Well, my, the one question I have to start off with, is this mostly used by the private investors or is it mostly large uh, hedge funds or, or corporates? It's a combination. I think in, in the, the broad-based sort of ETFs are very much still used by the retail investors. Okay. But when you look at some specialist ETFs, and in particular your commodity ETFs, are used quite extensively by your institutional investors. The institutions are not really investing much in the, um, some of your broad-based market ETFs mm -hmm. any, um, just yet. Um, I think what they do use from some time is things like sector ETFs to do quick sector rotation and so on, but it's mostly still a, a, a real um, sort of retail um, game at this stage. When you look around the world, it seems like this can be a winner-take-all business or a winner-take-most, um, you know, Barclays iShares and some others that really became the most liquid, most used uh, in some cases. Here in South Africa, how do you see that playing out? It's still relatively poor pre penetration that we see in South Africa and, and one of the main reasons really is accessibility. Because the, the traditional sort of investment access model in South Africa is focused on the LISP, so the linked investment mm -hmm. service provider platforms, and most of them don't offer um, ETFs at all or a very limited selection thereof. And I think that's really been the main constraint to growth. But if you see that this industry in the last two years has doubled assets under management, I think we are fast approaching that mm -hmm. famous tipping point that Malcolm Gladwell was mm -hmm. talking about. And I think it's important that we, that we um, look at these things and not think that they are a homogenous asset class or group of investments, mm -hmm. but acknowledge them for exactly what they are, which is to able to give you very targeted exposure to specific sectors or commodities or currencies or whatever and do it in a very transparent and cost-efficient way. Mm -hmm. Noreena, your top ETF. Well, you know, oh, this is going to be a difficult one for you to answer. <laughs> you know, I know what my top one is, but for any investor, it would differ, of course, because it depends on what on your their risk profile. Yes, and surely, but I think if you look at the JSE, our own market, and if you're looking for the first ETF to buy, really looking at broad market exposure into our own market. Um, this is not a punt because it's our own product, because I, but it is because it is a broad market ETF. The equally weighted top 40 ETF gives you the exposure to the overall market at the lowest possible risk, and I think that's what's important. So, so it's the an equally weighted ETF. That's right. So it's exactly the same 40 companies that is contained mm -hmm. in the more regular sort of market cap weighted top 40 ETF, but 2.5% in each of the companies. Long term you get the same return as your traditional market cap weighted one, but at about 4% lower volatility, mm -hmm. and that's really the appeal. So Izan, would you buy into an ETF of that nature, equally weighted ETF? Um, yes, because it gives you a different exposure to the market. I mean, because the, uh, the cap weighted is, is often not the right thing to do um, and so an equal could be for various reasons could be the the other thing that's also often interesting is that it has a lower cost base often against uh, as opposed to the unit unit trust and that sort of thing um, I've got a question for you I see that we can also trade currencies that yes. way yes the currencies are offered as exchange traded notes so maybe just a quick word on the difference between an ETF and an ETN for, for um, um, viewers that are not familiar with that an exchange traded note is a promissory note by a bank mm. so this is not a, um, a buying into a physical investment fund like an exchange traded fund would be so you've got to add the credit risk of the issuing bank with mm. it as well but that being said it does give us access to more difficult to find investments like currencies mm. physical commodities and then some of your, your harder to come by emerging markets, China, yeah. Africa and so on. So yes, the currencies essentially they would create an index which on a daily basis really just looks at the change in that index. So let's say it's going to be a RAND dollar ETN that you are buying. It would every day look at what is the percentage change of the RAND dollar from one day to the next and that is how your investment performs up and down as the RAND strengthens or weakens. Matthew? I'm curious if there's uh, an unbiased kind of third-party source of information about ETFs, ETNs, 
here. So who would an uh, investor look to you to understand which one might have the tightest spread, the lowest cost? I think that's, so a very, that's a very good question. And in South Africa, we've got a website, which is also an online trading platform called www.etfsa.co.za. It really mm. can't be more simple than that. Mm. But the good thing about it is that they offer you the product profiles and fact sheets of every single exchange-traded fund and exchange-traded note that are listed on the JSE. So not only do they give great information in that sense, but it also then provides you the investment platform should you want to actually invest invest in trade. You can actually do it directly there at good trading cost, but also switching between the different products. Um, so that's certainly the first area that I point a lot of investors mm -hmm. to.